my presentation uh, was twofold with a colleague. We were really here to um, talk about the current uh, clinical trials environment and landscape in pediatric drug development, uh, as well as kind of the pathways for clinical trials development uh, that the FDA and other regulatory bodies have. Um, I spoke primarily, again, about um, uh, the, the, the current landscape. We know that pediatric clinical trials uh, tend to be much more complex than adult trials. Um, there are a lot of extra factors involved in getting drugs developed through um, a, a regulatory pathway. Um, most of the centers that you would do a trial in are academic centers. They're not just an outpatient uh, center. You have to go through hurdles with IRBs. Um, they almost always have local IRBs rather than central IRBs. Um, there's advocacy groups involved. Uh, we know that there are many centers that don't have the experience in doing pediatric clinical trials. So we look uh, specifically for centers that have, that have the experience. Those tend, again, to be mostly academic and larger centers. Um, and, and really what we found in the end is that although the regulations um, have been what we think is proactive for pediatric clinical trials since 1997, there's really been no increase in the number of trials that have been completed. Um, it's been relatively fat, flat, and if you look at the numbers from 2006 till 2012, um, given the economic uh, outlook uh, in, within the United States, there's actually been a decline in, in trials in children. So um, even though there's been more and more incentives put in place, uh, we found that the number of trials has gone down. So uh, I guess part of my talk was really why is that um, and what might we be able to do to improve that. Um, we know that there, again, have been quite a few incentive programs that do give exclusivity. And I think that in industry, the most companies don't realize that uh, those incentives actually turn out to be pretty profitable for them if they go through uh, that process. Again pediatric exclusivity is only an additional six months on your label, uh, but that six months, if you think that you've got a $1 billion drug uh, that, you're, that you're marketing in adults, that six months of exclusivity uh, might be quite a bit of money. And when they've looked at, um, when they've looked at this objectively, it turns out uh, that number one, since 1997 when the new re regulations came into play, it's been about $71 billion in additional revenue from drugs that had pediatric exclusivity. Um, and that comes from a uh, McKenzie report that was published in uh, October of 2013. Um, in addition, we know that the earlier that you do your pediatric program so that you're getting that uh, six months of exclusivity, um, the more profitable that program is. So even though it costs money to do the studies, um, the end result is that you have additional revenue that can be accounted for. So um, uh, again, the incentives are there. Um, but the, the number of trials has been flat. So the, the agency has recognized some of that and now they've put in place the, um, the rare pediatric disease voucher program, which we hope will be renewed. Um, uh, unfortunately, it sunsets after three, uh, one of which has been um, initiated at this point in time. And uh, that's through Biomarin uh, applied for the first one and got it. And it allows for priority review of another drug at a later date. Um, so uh, the, the, the goal there is that if you have a drug that you're developing that you think is going to be a blockbuster, typically an adult product, that you would hold on to that um, rare disease voucher and that you would turn it in at some point in time where you know you're not going to get a priority review because it doesn't qualify priority review. Now you have this voucher that you can turn in and get that priority review and hopefully that will turn into revenue um, uh, later on. So um, incentive programs like that continue. Uh, we hope that there will be more on the horizon. Um, and again, that that one will be renewed and that all of these together will uh, hopefully show an uptick in the number of pediatric trials that we're seeing.